Assassin Cow. We are back again with more Assassin Cow content because who doesn't like Assassin Cow Hunters? We have done a solar stasis void and now we're doing an arc version of the exotic to see just how well it can stand. Um, let me just say that the build is incredible and the most intense base content available in Destiny. Non-stop healing, increased melee damage and free invis on kills make this non-meta loadout 100% meta for this season and the very next. And I'm going to show you the ins and outs to this. If this sounds like your type of build, then why not leave a like, a sub, a share and turn on notifications for more content like this in the future, as I would really appreciate it. So let's break down what needs to be used for the setup to fully work and then go in depth further bit by bit. As the exotic is melee based, all of our fragments abilities will need to focus just on the area of use only and then once this is complete, the build can really shine in the highest difficulties around. The best way to go about this is to use Combination Blow for its low cooldown rate and stacking damage effect upon getting kills. This Soriating Blow is good as well, but the cooldown rate is very high and unless you have the needed stats, mods and perks available to reduce the cooldown quickly, then it's best you avoid this for now. After the correct melee is chosen, you then want to add on the following. Flow State where defeating a jolted target makes you Amplified. While Amplified, our dodge ability charges faster, the load speed is greatly increased and you become more resilient while dodging. We then have Lethal Covenant where after dodging a melee attack gets increased lunge, jolts targets and also blinds them while amplified. For Fragment you then want Spark of Ions where defeating a jolted target grants you ion traces, Spark of Resistance where being surrounded gives you more resistance to incoming damage, Spark of Shock where your arc grenades jolts targets and Spark of Feedback where taking melee damage will increase your melee damage briefly. For stats, we have 60 mobility, 70 resilience, 18 discipline, and 16 strength. Ignore the recovery stat as that is a byproduct of armor rolls. For key mod, we have Bowerful Well for plus 2 wells created, Frontal Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect, Melee Wellmaker for creating wells via power melee hits, Well of Life for increased health regen for a few seconds, and Powerful Friends for a plus 20 in mobility and additional bonuses. As the synopsis shows, this is the best way to build into MIDI if you want simple and straight to the point. You have fast MIDI cooldown and the ability to use it over and over again, which will overall allow you to abuse assassin characters for this. As the only downside to using a subclass is a lack of fragments that focus on just MIDI buffs as well, the setup overall is fine to use and is still pretty powerful, although it's lacking its feel. Compared to Solar, I feel like Arc fragments could have done a bit more better for variety. Anyways, for weapons, you should focus on having one weapon that gets your abilities back quickly and another that leans into the arc jolt effects. As an example, I have the Smite of Moran with Puglist and Swashbuckler, which can be gotten from the raid as crafting or getting lucky. This here is like a mini version of Monte Carlo, but legendary and allowing you to use a different exotic of your choice. The great thing about this combo is that any sort of mini kill will be giving you max damage for a short duration and getting kills with it will also give you melee energy back. It allows you to fully lean into the weapon and build as a whole and not worry about a lack of support towards your gear overall. At the same time, not everyone will have done the raid to get this role or weapon at all, so I would recommend you use the Monte Carlo or weapon with Wellspring to aid you with the build further. For secondary, we have the Brigand's Law with Volt Shot and Feeding Frenzy and this is a great weapon to own if you want non-stop Arc Shock 24-7. Not applicable for endgame, but the weapon and perk combo can allow you to shock targets after a successful kill and then chain that arc lightning to others and pretty much wipe out everyone with its infinity. It's full auto by nature, fast fire and reload and doesn't need a lot to make it functional, just a given combo is good enough. However, the weapon has a very low mag size and range and this may put some people off with how lackluster it feels in this department. This is why if you ever do go for this as a secondary, and you can craft it, focus on just these two areas first so your shots can connect better and your magazine doesn't fall short on killing a target. For Heavy, we have Thunderlord, which is now even better than before. Not only can it stun overlords, but it also has a catalyst, which I've now gotten. Heavy machine guns are very much favoured this season and any arc heavy machine gun will be benefiting greatly from it until the end of the season. With the catalyst, its DPS against bosses is incredible and can do a ton of damage if it connects properly and sustained. I can see this being useful in raids if everyone uses it, but the ammo reserves on it can be drained very fast while going to town with it. Scavenger mods are highly, highly recommended if you want to use this weapon a lot. 
for your stats, melee will be focused on first and then the rest will follow. But this can be done however you like as the base subclass perks will allow you to experiment a bit. Although our melee is at 60, you'll be surprised at how fast it can come back when your abilities are fully being used. As the setup requires you to be close, having Gamblers dodge will help you big time for getting a full melee charge back straight away after each dodge. This will then lead back to flow state aspect where being amplified will quickly recharge you and your class ability and each time we melee we are focusing strike and absolution which will also be helping us reduce this area down further. Lastly we have outreach which also leads back into our dodge ability and allowing us to get a quick boost of melee energy as well via our dodge. But you can remove this if you don't tend to swap out your dodge a lot. The good thing about the stats is that you only need your melee and mobility at 60 e to make it viable enough for end game. No need to get a stat to 100 unless you want to, as the feedback loop within the build should be enough to sustain you for long. Your discipline is also going to be helpful with getting you amplified quickly or just clearing the area out if things get too hectic for you to handle. As both our melee and mobility is in a relatively good spot, you can pretty much have the stat as high or low if you want, and trust me this is very fine to do if you do not have any other purposes for it. Minor 80 with Storm Grenades is the perfect combo for quick regeneration when needed, and will help a long way when against a mob that you can easily dispatch via melee. We then have Resilience which is at 70 and just like your discipline, you can also have this go higher if you have the ability to do so. I would recommend you go higher as the damage reduction is worth the effort, but if you don't have the ability to do so, then it's no issue. At leftover wise, we have Kinetic Cypher mod for allowing us to create all the power via Kinetic Weapons, Bottomless Bounty for improving the effects of Rune of Over, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger mod for increased reserves, and bad amplitude where stunning a champion could make them become jolted. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we're using and how they play within the build. For head we have discipline, bottomless bounty, connect siphon and bow for well mod. Arm we have resilience, focus and strike, a frontal wisdom mod. Chest we have resilience, thermal shot plating, cookers of dampener and melee well maker mod. Leg we have resilience, heavy machine gun, scavenger, absolution and well of life mod. Cloak we have Strength, Bad Amplitude, Outreach and Powerful Friends mod. The Assassin Cow is the best neutral game exotic around for the Hunters and has been a blessing in disguise for all the subclasses 3.0 builds out there. If you are a solo player at heart and want to find a way to survive long fights, then you should be using Assassin Cow at its fullest, as the simplicity of it allows you to achieve just that. Getting health back on kills and going into vids is basically two builds in one and upon attaching it to R3.0, you can become even more unstoppable. Combination Blow will be granting you stacking melee damage as you go, while also giving you class ability energy and health back on top of the sort of buffed effect. On top of that, you've got Lethal Current providing you with extra mini lunge that can jolt targets on impact and provide an aftershock effect which is very powerful in ad clearing minor majors in one full blast. Alongside our fragments as well, this is similar to the Stasis and Serial subclass style, where you can keep escalating your abilities non-stop and get a charge mini hit in one after another with little cooldown involved. The method to this is simple, all you need to do is dodge first so you can activate your lethal cunt aspect, melee, let the jolt effect kick in and get a kill and then dodge again. Repeat until everything is now gone. If such a build is perfect for those doing dungeon solo as you will want something that can be activated with ease but also grant you the necessary survival skills that all users will need in such a content. And like said, this can be done with other subclass choices as well, although the effects will be different of course. There is little skill ceiling to the build in terms of understanding how it works, and the only thing you will struggle with is timing your hits and make sure you don't connect against a target that has a beefy health bar to kick, such as a Ultra. Except from that, this is a fantastic build for those who want to use R3.0 to its fullest and also lean heavily into the melee side of things for the build. It's amazing at how much survival the build will offer for those who want to stay alive as long as possible and the ease of use should allow you to play it wherever you go as long as you don't overdo it. Give this a try if you want to sell dungeons now as this it will cover just that and more. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up with more Destiny content and banter. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.